but uh, the movie is Unsung Hero. Look, okay. We're starting with this one because it's the Christian faith-based movie. Uh, this is the story of the Longbone family. Yes, that's right. Their name is the Longbone family. Uh, they are in... They are... The, the father is... Uh, here. Yeah, the father, David, is a Christian music promoter in Australia. Uh, he had a big hit... He had a big, uh, big major tour success with Striper coming to Australia. And uh, when he's given the choice between going with a smaller band known as DeGarmo and Key, uh, he decides, no, he's going to go shoot shoot for the stars and go for Amy Grant. And, uh, and when the uh, Australian economy tanks, uh, he loses about a half a million dollars on the failed Amy Grant tour of Australia. <laughs> so... So he decides to pack up his family of six uh, to to go to America to promote Carmen. If, like I know I'm throwing I'm throwing names out of of Christian artists that you probably have never heard of, but I will guarantee this is a you, true story. What? Yeah, this is a true story. Uh, right. I will guarantee you that uh, when I was a Christian and following Christian music, uh, I this was this is my wheelhouse because I know Striper, <laughs> I know the Garmo and Key, and I know Carmen. And um, so, so he goes to America to prom to be the promoter for Carmen, but Carmen decides to go in a different direction, and uh, and now the Longbone family has moved to Nashville. All seven of them, they live in a house they can't afford. There's no furniture. They barely have any food, and now they have to figure out how to survive. And uh, and survive they do. Uh, essentially, they uh, they plug into the local church. They see uh, they see they're in need, and the church comes along, and helps them out. And then they realize that one of their daughters, Rebecca, uh, is a star. And uh, and the movie is about now figuring out a way to, A, survive as a family. Uh, B, uh, David has to swallow his pride because he's basically doing lawns and housekeeping at this point. Uh, and uh, and now he has a daughter who's incredibly talented. And, and that daughter, if again, if you're into the Christian music scene, uh, is Rebecca St. James. Uh, who is a big star that I've never heard of because I kind of dropped out of Christian music at this time. So, um, uh, look, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, I love this movie. I, I, I don't generally like faith-based movies because they're kind of, uh, you know, they're kind of like, uh, they don't go dark enough. And, and not to say that this movie goes dark at all, but um, this movie is a true story. It's about this family. It's about a family of faith who... Who basically, uh, you know, they they arrive in Nashville with nothing, and they they realize that prayer is the only thing that's going to get them through. And through prayer, they're able to, you know, God is able to bring them the things they need, and and ultimately become you know the successful touring family, uh, who supports not only their daughter Rebecca St. James, but um, for King and Country, I guess that's the two boys, and um, and uh, you know start their career as well, and. Uh, I will say this: uh, the, the the reason I like this movie is because I identify with it. The, there was life is hard, uh, especially for me in the in two thousand eight with the housing crash. Life got really hard, and the only thing that I had to rely on was was God and the church and and my family, and that's the same thing that happens here. And so uh, it is a well told story. It's a well done story in terms of the the quality of it feels cinematic. Uh, it's not hokey, uh, at least in my opinion. It's not as hokey as I find Christian uh, faith-based movies to be. Uh, and so I enjoyed this a whole lot. So, uh, Dante, you have any interest in seeing this movie? <laughs> I mean, I obviously, uh, you know, anyone who knows me knows I'm big into Christian rock. And uh, no, nah, I'm kidding. I'm absolutely not. But um, <laughs> You're not a striper. You were not. I, I think the last faith-based movie I saw was... Uh, was saved with uh, Mandy Moore and and Jenna Malone and uh, uh, Macaulay Culkin. I I, I, <laughs> I mean I went I went to a movie, but it's you know it, it was the closest yeah. to like what 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 you know Christian life is like as far as like you know hypocrisy and you know people who are really trying to live the life and that whole thing and um. Hey, look, man, I, I think there's a market for these movies. And even though it might not be my kind of movie, I, I think there are a bunch of Christians who would probably be very grateful to have this kind of movie out right now. Because let's be real, man. If you're like a real like Christian, right? Sometimes the theater, the movies, like there's not like a lot to go on, right? Like, like, 
like I have to imagine if you were like a really hardcore Christian, you don't want to see a movie with a bunch of sex scenes or, mm-hmm. you know, gratuitous violence. Right. And that whole thing. And um, and then there's the whole like LGBT part of Hollywood that's everywhere now in uh, movies mm-hmm. and TV shows. So for a hardcore Christian, there's not a lot. So I, I assume a movie like this will probably do pretty well um, yeah. within that community. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, is it, is it going to make big bo- box office numbers? Absolutely not. But actually, yeah, actually, the, the faith based film industry is quite strong. Um, you know, it's it's not the it's not the Iron Man audience. It's not sure. the general audience. But in terms of, again, uh, making money is about uh, knowing your audience, knowing the potential uh, ticket sales you're going to get in and then making a movie uh, budgeted in a way that can actually turn a profit. Um Look, I'll say a couple things about what you said. Uh, a saved, saved is one of my favorite movies, uh, it, because at that time I, you know, this was saved was kind of the uh, the battle I had with with the church at, at the time. Um, you know, I knew a lot of of these uh, legalistic Christians, yeah, and uh, and I I just fought fought like crazy with them because it's just like you're, you know, where are the, all these rules you're coming w- up with. Uh, you know, and and especially the charismatic movement, I, I've had issues with not because of the charismatic end of it, but because of the outgrowth and and the way the church treated people as a result of that. Yeah, um, no, I, I was part of the same thing uh, back when I was, you know, I guess a believer. You could say I got caught up in the charismatic part of it, and you know, the church was growing pretty fast. That I was a part mm-hmm. of, and but I realized why it was growing so fast because it was like these very um, rigid, uh, almost sales approachy, you know, tactics of the church. Right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And, and let, let, let's just say that, uh, not all churches would like that. Uh, no, no. I'm I, just saying what I was a part of, you know, um, mm-hmm. not every well, I certainly was a part of those churches as well. Um, you know, I mean, it took my wife and I a very long time to find the church that we're at now. And, and, and a lot of it had to do with the issues of money. And ironically, we're at one of the largest churches in in the in America. <laughs> but um, but the issue was money. The issue was about integrity of of the staff of the pastors, yeah. and it took us a long time to feel comfortable with a leader who, who who in our opinion, you know, felt like that they had integrity, and, and right. cared cared less about the money and more about the ministry. Um, and the the other movie I'll I'll, I'll turn people onto is Jesus music. It's a documentary about contemporary Christian music. Look, um, when I became a Christian, I was all about contemporary Christian music. Amy Grant, Michael W. <laughs> Piper, uh, Petra, uh, you know, Brian Duncan. I could go, I could go down. Steve Taylor uh, and Daniel. I, mean, I, I only know Amy Grant. Um, and that's because she got real mainstream. But um, all those other people you mentioned don't even know. <laughs> yeah, no, Amy Grant. I saw Amy Grant. She came to LA three times. I saw her all three times. <laughs> uh, I mentioned DeGarmo and Key. Uh, I've I've been to at least five DeGarmo and Key concerts. Um, <laughs> you know there was there was that Jesus uh, Jesus movement that was going on, and Jesus music kind of documented the 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 history of contemporary Christian music, uh, the good and the bad, because contemporary Christian music ended in a very bad way uh, around the DC Talk era. Oh, and, DC uh, Talk. Okay, I do I do remember that name as well. That that was yeah. a big one. Yeah, they were they were huge actually for a while, but the but the it was weird because the the uh, the history of contemporary Christian music kind of mirrored uh, my history as a Christian, and uh, you know because I was deep into it early on, and then as the years went on, the the veil kind of dropped, and you saw that yeah you know there was you know contemporary Christian was about the money uh, about these contracts these artists had to sign. Uh, and it was also about, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, a lot of these artists, they had a image to uphold that they just couldn't uphold because hell, we're all sinners and, um, and we fall and, uh, and what, and the way we treat the fallen is just as bad as, you know, the way we treat, treat sinners. Oh man. Like, honestly, th- th- this topic could be a whole nother show. Cause I mean, I know. I, you know, I, I have, I have stories just like that, man, you know, like. God, man, like there was a time when, yeah, I was, you know, quote unquote, sold out, sold out for Jesus, man. And, you know, did the whole thing. And um, but I started seeing the cracks. And and obviously, you know, as a Christian, you know, we're told to separate the sin from the sinner. We have to realize that, 
people are imperfect, but the, the word of God is not. I mean, I mean, sorry, that people aren't perfect, but the world, word, word of God is perfect. And we were taught that and we believe that, but it's really hard when you're walking in that movement to see so many people uh, not walking it, right? Like it gets a little discouraging, right? To the point where you're like, am I even following the right thing? <laughs> you know, and it, it, that's a whole nother topic, but it, it but it, it's a it's a thing, you know? And I, I'd like to see more of that in Christian yeah. movies, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know, getting back to Unsung Hero here, the 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 reason I just resonated with this movie so much is because this is not a perfect family. Um, you know, the idea of going out in faith, uh, this is, this is a very, you know, no one believed they could have survived. Uh, the only person who believed that they could survive was David's father, who, who was played by Terry O'Quinn from Lost, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> and, he, and he dons an Australian accent. And, um, but it, it was, I mean, that's, that's the thing is, life is difficult and i think my, one of the issues i've had with uh with the church at the time was um is that uh you know they they equated uh prosperity with faith uh, they equated the fact that you know if you were if life wasn't going good for you, you your faith wasn't strong and and to realize that no you know even job had a strong faith and he went through hell and that we do the same things and it's and it's not about judging others and saying uh you know, you know, casting judgment because bad things are happening. It's about the church coming together and surrounding those who are having hard times and lifting them up uh, so that they can then move on to the next family that comes along that is having hard times and moving up. That's kind of what I've always understood the church to be. So would you, I mean, would you recommend the movie? I absolutely would recommend the movie. Uh, I would say if you're curious about Christianity, this is a good movie to watch. If you've struggled with Christianity, this is a good movie to watch. Uh, and, uh, and it's, you know, I think the, my, all, my biggest issue with Christian movies is that, you know, it ends, it always ends with a, a nice tidy bow or that, you know, or that, you know, I'll read this one scripture to you and that will solve all your problems. And you realize it's much bigger than that. And it's not about, it's as much as it is about the Bible, it's, it's really about the church coming together and supporting right. those all right, so let's get to your comments there. I know people are reading some of the comments like, uh, cut the religious talk. Uh, <laughs> so we'll, believe me, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to the murders. <laughs> we'll get to the homoerotic stories in just a moment. Yeah. 